is the 28th of July. Um, it's Breakfast with the Masters. Tim Moore, how are you? Have a nice weekend. Oh, great. That's a uh, tough weekend, but that's okay. It's over. It'll be a good week. It'll be a good week. Um, let's see. I don't have any admin, I have to admit. There we go. I'm okay. I mean, I'm feeling okay. I uh, um, had a little bout of, uh, we had really, 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 really a lot of rain on Friday slash Saturday. Chicago's hot. It's not, we had a hot spell here of a couple of days, but I sound stressed. Yeah, I am. But it's okay, David. It'll go away. Um, um, I had a really uh, difficult time breathing for about 36 hours uh, because it was so humid here for me, for this area. We, so we went from a normal of 0 to 10 percent to about 40 or 50 percent, which is like a lot. Yeah, and I was wheezing bad in the last recording. You're right, wheezy. I barely made that last recording. Hopefully, uh, you know, a few more treatments I should. My breathing's better this morning. It was bad yesterday. It's better this morning. So a few more treatments, and uh, it's not as as, as uh, humid out. Although, I have to tell you, I, I prefer the rain. I'll take the pain when we need the rain. So, um, Yeah, I mean, I'm doing everything. It's just... Um, I have to get through the monsoon season. There's nothing I can do. Um, it's not bad enough for them to go um, go in and take a look, and and I'm, I don't have an infection. It's just uh, you know you know they've changed the diagnosis to cystic fibrosis. It's just cystic fibrosis is just the way it is. So oh well, let's uh, let's worry about the market. I'll be okay. I'm not. Go I'm, I'm I'm too cranky to go anywhere. Um, if you guys don't mind, I'm going to invite uh, anybody from the general market geometry family that wants to take a look at the breakfast session either uh, next Monday or the Monday after. Is that okay with you guys? Okay. Alrighty. And uh, we they won't disrupt you. Don't worry. We'll just... We'll let them watch, and then I'll, and I'm not. I won't really spend any time explaining. Um, no more than I do. Well, even less than I do when we have a new member. But uh, you know, it'll be interesting for them to see what we do. All right, so let's uh, let's see where we're going here. So without understanding motion, we could not understand nature. And I know I talked about, I've used this one a lot recently, but I really like this quote. Who has courage to say no again and again to desires, to despise the objects of ambition, is who is a whole in himself, smooth and rounded. In other words, no again and again to desires, and you refuse to impulse trade. To despise the objects of ambition, you refuse to be a slave to greed and fear. Who is whole in himself, smooth and rounded. You know what you're about. You understand where you're going. Trading is a process. You've got your plan. You stick with your plan. And you mature as you go along. You're whole, smooth and rounded. This is a very, very, very important concept. Master yourself. Without this, you're not you're not going to be a trader. It's the biggest fight you have. So, all right. Um, some of you may know that Blackthorn has a Blackthorn A, a Blackthorn quote unquote A, has a very large euro position, um, and Blackthorn. C, quote unquote, has a even larger pound position. Okay, well now you know. 
the euro is based on a daily. The pound is based on a monthly. Morning, Lewis. How are you? Uh, Blackthorn C's pound position is indeed more than 1.5 percent of my risk capital because what we did is we took one point we took the Blackthorn Capitals C and denominated it in pounds instead of dollars. So, in a weird way, I don't know how you'd measure that, Ouija. I generally don't denominate things in other things. Yeah, so it's 100 percent in a weird way, right? Um. Or it's nothing. That's another way to look at it. I just, we're denominating the pound right now versus the dollar. I normally don't denominate anything other than the dollar because the rate of return just smooths over that. And our rate of return is over 100% this year anyway, so it's not that. It's just um, we bought, um, let's just say we did a lot of things in Ireland. I can now say the country. And... Um, the fund is now housed, Blackthorn C is now housed in Ireland. I always wanted to ask, where does the name Blackthorn originate from? Um, I'd like to give you some really cool story about pirates and treasure and all this other stuff, but it actually, there's lots of places that use Blackthorn, but I lived on Blackthorn, spelled like that, um, in a forest for about 12 years. I had this big, beautiful spread in the middle of a oak forest, um, and when we, it, it it was too much. Of, it's, it was too foresty, if that's not a word, but you know what I mean. It was too deep a forest to continue to live there when we decided to have children. So unfortunately, we had to. We decided I didn't have to. We decided to sell it. Too much capital to leave lying there and then go buy another house somewhere else. So we moved closer. We were going to move closer to either Jeannie's parents or my parents. We moved close to my mother's house. And then, of course, health reasons, I had to move here. So Blackthorn came from a street, as sad as that sounds. I got the idea of using my street from, actually, my friend Liz Cheval, who was at her lawyer's filling out the paperwork after being a uh, successful turtle. And the lawyer said, okay, we got everything finished. I just need to know the name of the... And she went, the name of the fund, uh, oh, I, I don't have the faintest idea. And she looked up and named it after the street. There were the street sign in front of her. So, I uh, obviously have been intimate with the currencies lately. She was a turtle? Oh, yeah. Did she make it? Oh, sure. She unfortunately passed away last year, but, uh, yeah, she's probably, um, I actually think she was the most successful turtle. And had nothing, I mean, she walked in the door to interview and had no training experience, knew nothing about the market. She just thought it was an interesting looking thing in the Wall Street Journal. And went, huh, go talk to her. What is a turtle? Uh, my friend Richard Dennis who was the first fund manager in the world and also um, in the early 80s one of the one of the largest traders he's still a huge trader and still if I had to pick somebody to make more than a hundred percent a year for me it would be Richard Richard the problem with Richard is Richard's been bankrupt four times but people around you know, Chicago Mercantile Exchange know that Richard is so capable of making the money back that they just fund him immediately. And, of course, he makes the money back. If she was reading Wall Street Journal, didn't she have some interest in markets for being a turtle? Um, Gina, back in the early 80s, uh, around, at least around Chicago, you read the Tribune or the Wall Street Journal, and or both. And I, I believe she was commuting on a train. So probably a 45-minute, one-hour trip. She probably lived in North Shore, Chicago. So she didn't do it because she needed a job. She did it because she just went and went to an interview because it was, you know, it wasn't a job interview. It was the whole story that they wrote and said, you know, we'd like to try this experiment. And if you'd like to be a part of it, come see us here. When he went banker four times because of huge fluctuations in his P&L, that's correct.
he's a uh, highly leveraged all or nothing kind of guy. But, and and by the way, he no longer trades his quote unquote systems. He now uses them. I would say he's basically become me. Um, I don't think his PL fluctuates as much as it used to. Um, he uses his systems to generate ideas and then trades around them. So I don't know if that's a. I have to ask him. I don't want to insult him, though. He's a very close friend. I don't know if that's an evolution or if he's just tired of being a system trader. I don't know what it is, but uh, he's a, he's a very good trader. And you know, and before before that, he was a pit trader in the 70s. He's a very large grain trader. So um, good trader. And um, here's the thing: we do, you know, it sounds funny that I would say good trader about somebody that's been banker four times he understands exactly what he is doing he understands that in order to make that kind of money and by bankrupt I mean tapped his trading account he probably still had personal money but um, and uh, and and he had funds he was managing funds uh, for people so um, Huge fluctuations are part of the equation for the way he trades. He, the original system that the turtles had was a breakout system. And you know what I think of breakout systems. He has an iron stomach. Actually, he does have an iron stomach. Some of the turtles did not have an iron stomach, and that didn't work out so well for him. Adding the pendulum pullback ML set to his system for entry might be a nice experiment. Shane, I'm going to tell you right now, maybe you haven't been around long enough, I have been in three experiments where people bigger than he have he is have has tried have have tried yeah have tried to computerize or computerize parts of what I do and or part of what Dr. Andrews taught and Citibank only spent 25 million dollars before they threw the computers out the window Goldman Sachs th used an amazing 250 million dollars before they pulled the plug on the experiment and the other one was just a small at three four million dollars but um, and we told all of them in advance we told let me just say it again we told all of them in advance you cannot turn this into a system it won't work there's art in here don't worry about it our computers are so powerful we can take care of the art no you can't so those of you who think the computers are going to take over the world get real not gonna happen I think he's applying to his systems trading now the way you mentioned. He's playing art. Yeah, this is exactly right. He takes art. He, his system says go short, then he applies art. That's exactly right, Ouija. Actually, what he's doing, he's running four or five patterns that he would normally put into a system, and the patterns show up, and then he puts art around them and trades them, right? So, anyway. So, you know, I, I've been intimate with the Euro, and... Um, I have a propensity at the moment that the euro is likely to go down. Um, there weren't that many trades for me last month, and so we're gonna. I'll show you one of the hunts that I had um, in July. 60-minute euro, not a usual one for me. And one of the things I thought of when I was starting to look at this, and I know. This might sound funny, but again, most of the time when I day trade, I think about what I would like, what I know the class would like to see or would need to, see, does need to see. You follow me? So a lot of times I kind of couch what I'm looking for based on what we're going over, and I know we've done a lot of uh, tick trades bonds gold lately and um, I know a lot of you like time-based bars either you don't get good tick data or you're uncomfortable with it so um, I purposely was trying to do two things one use a time-based bar and two and I have a lot of problems with this and I see this in mentoring 
people use the wrong size stop on a 60 minute trade correct so I know the the ATR is, is 14 in the euro but take a look 45 95 um, that's 50 pips last time that I checked and this bar is 40 pips now let's take a look at this bar this bar is 72 down to Oh, just 150. Okay, well that that one's 22 and a half. That one's edible, but it so it's it's very difficult to trade with with the same stops as you use on 20 minute currencies. But I purposely was going to try and be cheap, and if I get stopped out, I get stopped out, and that will be a lesson in and of itself. Okay. Typically, I use 45 to 60 pips on 60-minute euro. Sometimes, depends on the volatility, sometimes even more. But it has been relatively quiet this month in the currencies, don't you think? It's summer. A lot of people are gone. Lots of sideways, yeah. So, yeah, right. So you're trying to find some movement, right? All right. So I'm, I don't know where this is going to go, but I'm trying to find some movement in the euro. I read an article that said we are seeing historic low volatility effects. Yeah, Matt. You know what? Uh, stop reading those articles. Um, it's just not true. I'm sorry. Never believe what you read, right? It's just, I mean, we're, we're just not. Usual stop size seems to be out of place, right? Uh, it, I, I know, for example, uh, Matt, you know what those are? They're bad statistics. They're useless statistics. It's somebody applying, you know what the VIX is? It's somebody trying to apply the VIX to currencies, and it, it doesn't make sense. And spending more time reading charts and less time reading other people's interpretation of charts. Yeah, you should spend no time reading other people's interpretation of charts. In fact, when I publish a, if you're in Breakfast of the Master and I publish an article, you probably don't need to read that. You probably need to worry about your own stuff. What, what, uh, would you say the same thing about high-frequency stuff they're pushing? Yeah, it's all crap. One of the guys from Commodities Corporation put together a high frequency, and and he's a big name, easy for him to gather a lot of money, put together a high frequency trading shop. They were closed within six months. Okay, It's crap. They lose money. Um, and unfortunately, that is not being reported. All they're doing is generating brokerage. And by the way, who do you think gets the brokerage? They cut a deal with a broker, or they open. No, no, no. They cut a deal with a broker, or they open their own brokerage shop. Well, for example, Paul Tudor Jones. Well, sure, the exchange gets a good portion of it, but Paul Tudor Jones has had his own brokerage firm since 1980. Oh my God, 1987. Um, I, I'm not even going to go. Uh, go into the mad Hungarian and how much money he stole from the public um, and if you don't know I mean good that's fine I don't want to even say his name God's gift to trading supposedly anyway why don't we uh, look at charts instead so it's uh, it's the euro it's 60 minute euro and I'm purposely going to use tight stops um, and I I don't expect to be successful. I think it's a dangerous thing. And we'll just go from there, okay? So, the euro's in a nice, for this time frame, the euro's in this nice move up. You can see the line of force. We had a gap. It had absolutely no follow through. And we're making higher highs now. 
and higher lows. And we're boxed in, but it's a little bit wide, but we're boxed in. We pop and make another new high. Inside bar, which closes in its lower third, but really nothing going on. And another new high. And we close near our high. Double top in 2D. And starting to not follow through, that's a double top and then two lower bars, three lower bars. Okay, bust that, come up, leave a high, but close in the lower half. Just in case, I do two things. I put out, let's, let's explain it first. The two-dimensional and the three-dimensional. You can think about it this way. Two-dimensional and three-dimensional advanced multi-pivot line. How about that? I haven't said that before, but... Or the two-dimensional, three-dimensional maximum excursion line. Are you willing to buy that? Okay, it can also turn into a Vance multi-pivot line, right? So here's my 2D advanced multi-pivot line, and here's my 3D maximum excursion line and perhaps advanced multi-pivot line, okay? Yeah, you won't, Gina's right, you won't know whether or not it is an advanced multi-pivot line unless it gets tested and holds, but a lot of times that's what it turns into, isn't it? All right, so we've got 2D and 3D going now. Head lower, seem to find a bottom. The volatility is tamping down. Slowly working our way higher. Test our maximum excursion or advanced multi-pivot line, but close on the low. Leave a high, pulling back, retesting that bottom, and break it. So far, good at advanced multi-pivot line and maximum excursion line. So, we have this to watch. If you were looking for an entry, if you were, re if you were locked and loaded, ready to trade, even if you wanted to be uh, Dr. Cheap here, well, let's see, 135, 60, 85. Because we're going to use cheap stops. Just because. Well, come on. There it is. So, let's imagine this. You've got your advanced multi-pivot line on and your maximum excursion line on. And if you can get above, you're back now? Okay. Was it me? Did you guys uh, not hear me? Oh, okay. It's BG and Pat. Okay. All right. So if you think about it, you've got a high. Oh, let's just do it. I don't want to be lazy. Top. What if, what if you remember? I mean, this is intraday trading. What if you want to play this game? Right? Top and shoulder. Moose and squirrel. As they say in Rocky and Moinkle. Top and shoulder. Yeah? Now, if you believe this, and you like the way it looks, and you think this is overextended, look at the wide range bar, wide range bar, you might be looking to be short up in here now, now that we've taken out the lows right here. Everybody see those and get it? This is not the trade I took. Maybe it's the trade I should have taken. I don't know. 
I'm making it up as I go along right here. Yeah? So, as this curls back up, and you can see it's a nice orderly curl with very small orderly bars, this looks to me to be a pendulum pullback. It's orderly. It's people slowly getting washed out of their profits, right? It looks to be a pendulum pullback. So you might be leaving orders to sell. All the way along. Right? Does that make sense? Wouldn't you want to retest on that line if you wanted to sell? It's up to you, Al. Some, I, I, I've said this before. I spent the first 25 years uh, of my professional career just trading outright against the line. And then I went, I will explain pen and lecture. Um, and then I just, then I did the homework, right? Now, that, that, that's only if you want to retest up to five bars. But, um, and then I, and then I did homework and went statistical work when I had the database to do it and um, found that, you know, I hate those bars where you sell here, let's say sell here, and the next bar is 100 pips higher. I hate that. I mean, it's nice because the pain, it, in the sense that you're dead immediately, right? There's no pain. You just wake up in heaven. You don't get dragged behind the bus. But you always wonder, what did I miss? And we found that by waiting for the test and retest, if you're willing to accept 25% fewer trades, 80% of the time, that zoom is not going to happen, period. So you're pretty much taking it out of the picture. All right, so pendulum pullbacks, in that price fluctuates, David. And in a downtrend, as price fluctuates, what you're waiting for is price to pull back or fluctuate. And it's, it's like a pendulum swinging. And it's a pendulum, if you think of the pendulum being on a railroad car, remember we had that, boy, I wish I could figure out where that is. I'll have to find that. My daughter Lucy did that real cool um, animation of a railroad car going down a slope with the pendulum swinging back and forth. Remember that? Nobody remembers it? I thought it was cool. If you took the same strategy at the high on the 16th at 135.90 with the 135.90. Oh, uh, yeah, but we haven't taken out any bottoms here. Oh, on the 16th. 590. Okay. Um, well, let's just let's just draw that. That does not look. Uh, maybe it does. What's the difference between this and this? It's this long range where price has built up a bunch of energy. Instead, what we have is wide bar up wide bar up some volatility sell off and then minute bars no coil minute bars working their way up it's a subtle difference i don't know that it makes a difference and i don't know that i i don't i don't know that this is even the right trade but I'll, I'll, the only thing i was pointing out is if you wanted to you could you know you could go ahead and leave orders to sell here now, if you do that, make sure you do it every time. And I wouldn't sell right after a coil. Wait, because you want, price will, has energy to burn, right? But anyway, this is not the trade. But just it, it came to me as I was watching the bars, that's all. So now we take out the low. And I don't know. This is I, I guess if I was trading this, I would be thinking this is my first problem here. What do you think? Maybe you'd be thinking this is profit town, but I I'd be thinking this is my first problem. I don't really see this as a problem or this as a problem or this, but I guess this whole area. So I'd say like you know one one thirty five. 
55, something like that. Three low stacked up logical pivot area, maybe. Yeah. So let's see what we get out of it. Wide range bar lower. So we're at uh, 135, 60. Let's, let's see where we are. So this is how you should be doing an analysis. So you risk at 25, you already have 95 pips in this. you got to be at least the break even, right? You're more than three to one. And maybe if you took that trade, you'd be thinking anywhere between 60 and 55, I think I'll just book this trade and reload because you'd be up like you know, four to one or something. All right. So... Do, 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 do. So there's a nice little gap there. And we'll see how our maximum excursion line is going to do. Leave a high, pull back, pull back, leave a low. And when that bar prints, I put in this maximum excursion line. Same idea. 2D, 2D, and a maximum excursion, 3D. Yeah? Dueling maximum excursion lines. Now, again, if you took this trade, maybe you're at 3 to 1 and you take your money, whatever. But if, if nothing else, you're boxed in. Volatility turning into a range, very narrow range. And first break of this downsloping maximum excursion line. And probably busted out of the trade at this point for some profit, but not much. Unless you had an order in it. 62 it looks like, which I, maybe you would, maybe you didn't. Now we're back to the lower maximum excursion line. And you know, these aren't yen bars, these are euro bars. And these are, this is why I, I, I cringe when I see people use 25 point stops on a 60 minute chart. Even though the ATR says 14, okay, that's only part of the equation. You have to throw in and I don't have a measure for this. I don't know this of a statistical measure. So, uh, Matthew, you were talking about low volatility. The problem is those statistics really don't account for a whole lot of things. Looks like a rolling chop going higher. Okay, I'll, I'll buy that. So, I don't know how to measure the average volatility. And then also, I don't have a measure for that large bar that shows up or an easy way to measure it. I can do it by hand. I suppose I could do, well that isn't what I wanted to do. I suppose I could do uh, that. Maybe off of here. Well, that's not bad. So there's your rolling chop idea, right? So this would be frequency And frequency reflected. So Ouija, rolling shop going higher? Maybe. So far at least, huh? Bottom holds. Back to the bottom, back to the top. Very much a rolling chop. Now, if you were playing this from the long side, once this showed up, got long, 
you get out at 80%, you get long, get out at 80%. But this is not enough excursion for me to bother. But yeah, this is a hell of a nice bar. Let's see what it leads to. Leads to back in the range. <laughs> I th and I think that's what a lot of people are experiencing in July, isn't it? All right, we're ready. We're happy. We're ready to take off, and we're right back on the runway. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your pilot speaking. Uh, we're on the runway. We were ready to take off, but now we're going to wait for three hours. It's like, oh, great, thank you. All right, so let's see what happens. Right back in the rolling chop again. Working its way higher or not. And you get the bottom end of the rolling chop again. Just just when you thought it was safe. Al, we're right back at the bottom of the rolling chop. One, two, three. Okay. Oops. Oops. First time we've taken out anything on the downside. Yeah? Uh, so let's note that. At that top, I was marked as a pivot. Okay, I'll mark it for you. What color would you like, sir? How about green? Any color. Well, okay. Well, then I'm going to give it a green. I'm trying to give it a green. There we go. All right. So Al says mark that as, as a potential pro pivot. And we're right back in the range. Are you maddened <laughs> if you're trying to trade this? And, of course, we could have done this. We didn't. Okay, Kai. Why is that? Oh, okay. So, and so we might have drawn that in, and just when you thought this was giving you a clue to the direction, we're back in the rolling chop. And... Yeah, we'll see. And we're right back above it again. So, so much for that idea. Now, take a look at the screen. Pull back about you know, move your chair back a couple steps. Take a look at the screen. What are we looking at right now? Yep. Range, 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 range. Maybe expanding pivots. We don't know that, but we do know range. But maybe. Or maybe the range broke into the high and low. Maybe. Maybe we, maybe we ran stops here, or maybe we ran stops here, but sometimes that's the halt. Maybe we, well, if this is the wash of buyers, this is the wash of sellers, right? So we'll find out whether this is a range whether it was just a wash, wash everybody out, and now we'll find the true direction. We had a number of new highs, and this is the only time we've taken out swings to the downside. 
Is this a uh, a portent of things to come? That people are long and maybe a little bit long with impunity? Could be not sure. Maybe that's reading way too much into the market, right? So we're back at this is prior major highs above them, flirting with them. Leave a bottom after a wide bar, and we close almost on the low, but it's immediately reversed. So we're still right back in that rolling chop. We've been outside it slightly, but we're right back in that rolling chop. That's definitely a path of price and it's not a median line. Now we're above it. Second close above it. Third close above it. Alright. We've got our advanced multi-pivot line out. We're all boxed in. Let's see what we're about here. Volatility to tamped way down, rangy, and now volatility is expanding. And if truth be told, we're simply going, oh, I have to give my daughter a kiss goodbye. One second. Yeah, you have a great week. Okay. I'll see you on Thursday, okay? okay? I love you. Have fun playing. Okay. This is going to band camp for the week. And then Monday is school. Young lady, and young ladies and men go back to school on in Arizona on Monday. Very short summer here. Yeah, she's going to go play eight hours a day. Yahoo. All right. So, but really, we're in a ten pip range, fifteen pip range in the euro, which is that's pretty tight. And doing a whole lot of nothing is what's going on. Now, that's not going to last. It's going to. find its way out of there eventually because first of all things fluctuate second of all this is the euro it doesn't really stay in ranges very long but we're doing a pretty good job now it's got a bit of a downward tilt okay now we're breaking out of it we're at the bottom end of these lines were great huh all right so now we've busted out closing below it And I know I haven't traded yet, but it's okay. Actually, that was June into July. But they're 60 minute bars. And now we pull up and head lower. So I put in a new maximum excursion line. Because we've got a lot of action below this maximum excursion line. You see that? Now, if this 2D and 3D line set hold, that will be goodbye to this coil, won't it? Let me see if I can truncate this. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Yee! That's a bar only a mother could love. Can I explain 2D and 3D a bit more? Sure. Anything that has sloped is three-dimensional. You can think of it as a line, a two-dimensional line like this. And if you just think of like going to the theater and watching, um, uh, what's one that I liked? Uh, the Hobbit, okay? And the Hobbit, and the guy's jumping across the screen in a two-dimensional theater. But to make it look cooler, what they literally do is they hinge him so that he jumps right at you. And that actually is a bar with slope. If you can imagine this not sloping down, but instead sloping out right toward your face. So the bar has depth as well. And I don't know if that's going to ring a bell for you or not, Gina, but that's another take at it. I'll just keep explaining it 
in one of the explanations that I think of randomly at the time, one of them eventually will hit you. Okay, so just keep asking. The Smarty Box, there you go. Okay, all right. So now we're huge wide range bar. Wow, does this bar make you think the high is significant? Uh, well, yeah, I, I would say, uh, I didn't mark it, but I'm going to go ahead and move with Al. I use, I'll use your green EL, so to speak. Um, because we, we've busted, oh, look at that, it was perfect line to begin with. But if I do that, I'm not sure what, what's the high here. Because if you think about it now, here, Gina, let me, let me further warp your mind, okay? On a three-dimensional basis, this high is higher than this high, right? Yes, no? Does that make sense? Okay, because if I draw the slope line here, you can see that we're nowhere near as high here or here as we are against the slope line. We're measuring it against the slope line now. All right. So, even though they look like triple tops, they're they are in 2D, but in 3D these are lower highs, which is a weird and spooky, but it is. It is what it is. Actually, I don't. There's can't. I can't think of anybody that's ever done any 2D, 3D work or 4D work with charts. And actually, I, I, since I started showing you guys, I can't imagine teaching without it, let alone trading without it. Okay, so, but you watch. I'm the first. You watch. It won't be long. Pretty soon, they'll be talking about multidimensional highs. I can see Anna Porvakova, or whatever her name is, on CNBC trying to explain 2D and 3D. Good luck with that. What is her name? <laughs> Hang on, i got to get my makeup on. Can somebody explain that 2D, 3D thing on before I, to me again before I go on so I don't... Anyway, the, the 100th monkey. There you go. Thank you. I like that. Anyway. Thank God I don't have to wear makeup in the morning. Tight box. Those, if you look at those two bars, this bar and this bar, look at them. I mean, they don't have the same high and the same low, but they're the same bar, aren't they? It takes about two months for other people to copy you after they hear it. All right, so let's keep our eyes open for multidimensional work. Some nitwit will... They, they, they got it nailed. That's okay. We'll bring out fourth dimensions and watch them strangle themselves. All right. So, mirror bars followed by another set of mirror bars. Better pay attention. And, of course, just when you think it's going to be important, it turns into smush. A whole lot of nothing. Ranges are getting smaller. The bars are going nowhere. So we stay in this coil for quite a long time. Finally break out to the downside. We don't get very far yet. Let's see if it runs. Leave a lower high. So, so far this is looking like a significant high, isn't it? All right, so David, you wanted to know about pendulum pullbacks? Yeah? All right, watch. If I think that this is a significant high and that we are now going to go lower from this area or lower, right? Then this would be the move down and a pendulum pullback would be something like this. Anywhere that's a lower high. So here's our move lower. It's all stretched out and now it pulls back as people start to take their profit or the people that sold the lows 
have to cover because it's at a loss. This is the pullback and somewhere in here you want to get short with a stop over an area like this for example. That's a pendulum pullback. Does that make sense? So we're take, in, in that sense we're taking advantage Got it. So the top is the t top is the start. Yeah. You have to decide that it's a significant high, and then you're looking for a pendulum pullback. Now maybe you found an area very close to the bone to get short, but if you didn't, then you can look for pendulum pullbacks. Okay. We're going to be using price fluctuates to our advantage. And actually, that's one of the things we're going to do here as soon as we get to the action. Is there a tactical area here to look for the pendulum pullback? Uh, it comes when it comes, Ouija, unfortunately. Um, remember that question, and when we get to the actual trade, then you'll see that I'll mark about full, four pendulum pullbacks. And I'll mark a secondary trade, a third trade, a fourth trade, all on pendulum pullbacks. All that have stops, all that are just as uh, viable. How about that? So there's no way to know how deep it's going to go. And you could say that this is the pen is a pendulum pullback. The problem is I got no stop and I don't really see what I have is I have a range that leaves the top and then we break out of the range to the downside. So that's not really a pendulum pullback for me. I want it to swing back. And here we're in a range. I want it to swing back. So, playing with the downside and breaking out, leave a lower low, so lower highs, lower lows, continue. Very quickly, we're back at the top of this. I think that is part of the range extension of the first movement. Mm -hmm. So, we've extended to the downside nicely. We're, we have more than 100 pips here as a trader now what I would like is I'd like a pendulum pullback to sell and then take advantage of perhaps I've been imagining the pendulum incorrectly says Maseo. The pendulum is anchored at the A point uh, it doesn't have to be Maseo I would say the correct thing to say is it's anchored at any pivot. It can be anchored at any pivot. Think of a railroad car sliding down this track and price fluctuating back and forth. So it's moving down and fluctuating and moving down and fluctuating, moving down and fluctuating. Then it moves all the way back to an area where you have a stop above it. Sell continues on. Yes, no, yes. I don't want to give this work any credence, but there are people that have done work on, you know, they do, it's all these people that waste their time doing work on counts and they have all these special rules when their counts don't work and everything else. You know, you know what I mean? And I'm, I don't just mean Elliot. There's 900 different variations out there, but it's all crap. But one of the things they all tend to say is that the first wave is, n is not the biggest wave, right? It's always the second or the fourth. Uh, I don't know if that's real or not, um, because frankly, I don't give much credence to the whole methodology. But that's just me. If it works for you, go ahead and use it. So we're back up at the top of this range. Pull back, but staying at the top. Starting to eat into it. Now we'll see what this down sloping maximum excursion line is worth. Add it. Add it. Add it. Still there. Still there. Still there. Pulling back off of it. So far it's a powerful line. Right back at it though. Trying to reject it and oops. 
very good until here and this should be marked through the line and you can see this is the second high so we're testing that secondary high break it some uh, some information just rolled off that's why the right the scale changed basically I have double tops here or triple tops or quadruple tops yeah it's a question is it horizontal is it rangy is it horizontal what is it I don't know we basically haven't gone higher to get to this line we've just gone to the right we've slid right so yeah maybe horizontal And another new high, but look at the closes are the same. New box. We break out, so we break out of this range to the upside, run the stops, break out to the downside, run the stops, and right back in the range. Well, so this has been everybody's experience in July, right? Ready to go, all loaded up, not going anywhere. There's an interesting bar. <coughs> that one takes out two swings by itself. Well, we haven't we haven't gotten to August, but yes, it probably will be August for sale. Because more people are going to be on vacation in August, so the market's going to be even more thin. So we've got several things going on, and this is a, the first year, remember this now, put the file this away in your memory. This will be the first summer that we're going through where banks can't hold positions, and institutions like Goldman Sachs can't hold positions. So they can't speculate any longer. They, If, if somebody sells them dollars, they have to go out and sell them immediately. And there are actually people paid to check their positions and make sure that they sold within the clock. The clock is ticking. So who's left? Expect bigger moves? Uh, John, I, 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 I hesitate. I would say expect, you know, so again, Matthew said, uh, somebody said this is the least volatile period in foreign exchange. I would say expect more illiquid markets. That's part of the Frank Dodd Act in America, yes. And unfortunately, Europeans have adopted as well. It's, well, yeah, no, it's stupid. Um, it's going to reduce, I, I, a, a very, very good economist that I know uh, did a study. It's going to reduce bank earnings by more than 50%. And it was meant to decrease the volatility of bank earnings it's going to double the volatility of bank earnings looking at their historical numbers should we short them uh when they look weak sell the shoulder not the top david okay but if you see a top for me i think they're a prime candidate yeah i think you're about to see another round of problems in Europe. Is there a maximum excursion line across the lows? Sure, there could be. There's uh, there's always a potential. So if you want it, we will draw it. So there you go. And I would say this is a test. Weak bank we equals bail-ins. I don't know, Gina. I, I If they give more banks money in America, I may throw up.
And you know, I have, I now actually have uh, diplomatic papers in several countries, which means I could walk out tomorrow. And uh, there might come a time when I just have had enough. I don't know where the hell I'd go, but that's the that's the sad part. Where do, where else would you where would you want to live? Maybe Canada. Well, yeah, the UK. But I don't think the UK is any better, Jose. How's the UK going to be if they don't have Scotland? Travel out to space. That well, that could be happening pretty soon. Actually, uh, um, Elon Elon Musk. Anybody else know who he is? Yeah, I, I can be a lord in Ireland. As a matter of fact, I have five provinces, so to speak. Elon Musk, uh, owner, well, ex-owner of PayPal, eBay, slash, uh, owns SpaceX and owns Tesla. SpaceX. He's he's blowing up. You know, he's he's sending up all the satellites for NASA now. That's how smart he is. And SCTY, which that's right, made a wonderful uh, solar company that I I'm invested. In, I think is going to do very. Everything he's touched has just turned to gold. So I why not? Anyway, um, he came to see me about ready ready for this one. See if you think this is a scary thought. He publicly said the people that are going to step on Mars have already been born. But he privately has said to at least me, the, peop the person that's going to step on Mars has, has already been born, and it's me. And it's not going to be very long from now. And on top of that, what do I have to do to found a bank? No, not me. I mean, Tesla, Elon Musk. I'm not going. Hell no. Are you kidding me? I'd like to go, but ahead of Richard Branson. Actually, Richard Branson um, has lost the space race to him. And um, Richard Branson is staying alive by doing joint ventures with him. And, and Richard will go with him. But he's, he's a crazy guy. But Elon's a little bit. Virgin Galactica looks like a nice idea. It is, but actually they're using SpaceX to technology now. So anyway, he wants to know if he can start a bank. Like the first internet, internet, intergalactic bank or something. And uh, you know, I, I laid it out for him, and I, I, I don't, I don't know. I said it's just a digital bank. You might as well just do it, in a, you know, here as a digital bank. Just form a digital bank. You already did in PayPal. Think about it. Oh yeah, that makes sense. So, but don't be surprised if you hear about the first international galactic bank or some crap like that pretty soon. All right, so we're up here. We're making new highs. And you can see, it really looks like it wants to go higher, doesn't it? Higher highs, higher lows. We've taken out the downsloping maximum excursion line. Ranging right at the top, just beating on the top. Make a new high, but close on the low. Alice, this is the first one I marked. Because it sure looks like it wants to go up. And then it pops the range in one bar. So we'll see if there's, and, and you know, you can see with this follow through, this is where I marked it. I went, well, how, how, why is price down here? So, I'm going to start marking because I'm kind of surprised. I mean, it looked pretty spectacular. And then, now we break the maximum excursion line. Huh. But, break right back. Right back at you, so to speak. But, right back at you. And, un make a low. Now, take a look at this bar. Make a low, but close on the high. So, Al, that looks significant enough to me. I mean, I'm going to confirm it first, but I'm probably already marking it. As I, you know, if I was, I don't watch 60-minute charts for 60 minutes. I know some of you do, but I don't. But if I 
pull, came back an hour later and saw that bar, I'd probably be marking it, right? And especially, oh, there's a retest of the bottom. So you can see us trying to get back to the bottom and failing. And I suppose, let me just steal one here. I guess I'll, I'll use this one. Yeah, that's fine. Trying to get to the bottom, pounding on this, and I wanted long after seeing those two bars. All right, so where's your order? Sorry, nice broker's not in today. Uh, so you want to be in on a retest right here? I have several questions swimming around in my mind, Jose. Well, then we'll throw them out, okay? So I'm going to put your order right there. Um, you mentioned the prior high could be a major high. Would your pivot marked MLA be an opportunity if that was the case? Too far away. So, can I say any more about it? Well, yeah, all this other stuff has happened in between. Look, all this stuff has happened in between. Okay, it, it's out of the picture. Maseo, here's what I can say about it. See if this makes sense to you. Ready? Are you ready? This is you, isn't it? Isn't it? Well, then how could this possibly be in your mind? Because it's off the screen, dude. I'm trading off of this and nothing but this. Okay, so it's not possible for me because it's out of the picture. I'm trading to the right, not to the left. Okay? The most I would have, if I was going to squeeze it at all, would be the, the prior low. I certainly wouldn't have the prior high and the prior low. I don't need that. I don't want that. I don't want to be a part of that. I want. Do you understand that or not? Maseo? Okay, if I have this much information on my screen, I'm not considering wherever the hell that other high was because it's far, far off my screen. I want to trade in the moment. That's right, Al. Price, if price is going to go down, it's going to tell me right here or right here or right here on my screen. I don't have to go back to last Thursday. It's all, it's, stay in the moment. It's all right here in front of you, live. Don't go looking for answers in the past. You can do that, but this is a much more powerful method of trading. Trade to the right. Trade in the moment. Don't trade by squeezing in, okay? How long have we been talking about how much data you should have on your chart? And that also means, well, you know, I got this much data most of the time, but every once in a while, yeah, years, BJ is right. Since the beginning, yeah. Uh, every once in a while, I let me just squeeze in. No. When we say this much data, we mean this much data. I don't mean squeeze in and look at the prior two highs. I mean this much data, period. Even when we have a big position on and we're boxing in, we have this much data in and we're boxing in on this much data. So it's really an important concept. It's not a physics concept, it's a trading concept. So, let's see. 
Jose, so far you're not filled. And I just marked MLB. This is where I go. Okay, you know, this has got to be B down here now. So I've got two out of the three of my alternating pivots. Not trying to turn off the discussion, but say, oh, I'm just telling you. This, let me write this and see if this helps you. And we don't know because it didn't get tested. It's like crack for those of us who've used all the data, working away from the old habits. Sure, David, that's exactly right. It, I know it's difficult because you guys are used to using mountains of data to trade, but, you know, you, and you can do it. You just are not going to be as good as those that learn to trade in the moment and trade to the right and use... I think Shane's come up with a magic number, 109 bars, something. I we'll have to ask him at midday, at the sorry market map session, what his magic number is. So this is where I decided to be. Let's see if it get filled, Jose. Pulling back. Oh, Jose, you're long. Jose, Jose, can you see? I'm going to give you a 25 pip stop on it. And uh, yeah, the entry looks very nice at the moment. And so it's leaving higher highs and higher lows. And now it's just congesting. Now at this point, a lot of people would just say, well, it's not doing anything, it's ranging. But, you know, maybe you bought the bottom of the range, but maybe you bought something more important. And that bar would make you think, Jose, geez, I'm a genius, huh? You like that one, Jose? Like that bar? No, because before it printed, I was hating it. Okay, I like that. Okay, John says deal with the top first. Well, Moseo, are you paying attention? I've got a top now in front of me. I've got a broad top in front of me. And I had a big sell-off. And I marked this as a major pivot. I marked this as a major low. If I mark this as the other pivot, what am I going to have? Down soapy median line, says Jade. Okay. Let's look at the next bar. When that bar prints, yeah, and I'm going to have, Ouija's got it. Let me write it rather than say it, Ouija. I'm going to have this, Jade, I'm, I'm sorry, the sale, and see if this makes sense. Uh, where can I steal it? I don't need the other top because I got this top, the sale. It's right in front of me. And I'm right now investigating the quality of this top and when this bar prints and doesn't follow through I am now able to go and because it's current price action not price action from days and days and days ago it's much more reliable it's in the markets memory that means there's orders at these highs see the thing about the orders that were over there at the one that we marked with green Maseo, those orders to sell are long gone because we made significant lows after that. All, all of the sellers are now working on new data. It's old. The market only has so much memory. So now I've got a new, i got a new friend right here in front of me. And I want to know what's the quality of this top. And if this is, turns out to be a top, this will be the shoulder. And this will end up being my C. And I should be able to work something off of this. Shouldn't I, Maseo? Okay. Investigating the quality click for you. Good. 
So pay attention to that, guys. It's right in front of you. I know that this is a recent event. I know that there are likely orders right here. It's this nice range and the failure bar. There's probably a nice set of orders sitting right here to sell. Okay, so now we come down. When that bar hits, I go exactly L, M, L, C. And now I can put in my median line. And this is going to be, I know we've been doing a lot of head spinning stuff. and This is a pretty vanilla trade. Maceo says, goodness, I've been missing the nose on my face. Yeah, well, you know what? Sometimes we have to go back and see it again and again. That's okay. We, you know what? As a teacher, you never know what's going to click for somebody. Okay, so you try and do it five or six or 13 different ways. And eventually it will click. I, I, there's no one in the morning sessions that I can't say that if you give me some time, I, 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 will, I can say that if you give me time, I can make it click for you. I might have to come at it five or six different ways, but that's okay. That's my job as a teacher, okay? But I can make it click for you. I can teach you what this means, why this means this. These concepts are teachable, okay? I don't know. And Gina says, I appreciate your patience and perseverance. Well, um, I'm investigating myself at the same time, Gina. What do I know? How do I know it? And how do I use it? And why do I use it? And is it right? And those of you who have been around a long time have seen me throw some things out publicly that I used to use. Say, you know what? I know I said this, but I... I was wrong. I was spoofing myself. All right, so we leave a low. Investing in the quality of this X is a very informative statement. Yes, it is, Shane. And you should be thinking about that. In fact, if I'm interested, what's the quality of this top? Don't I have another question? right in front of me Jose's long shouldn't we be wondering about the quality of this bottom as well yeah Jose how are you feeling about that Now, we're just inside. This is the controlling swing right here. We're inside the controlling swing. It's not like we're taking out either side. Jose says, I like it. I'm good. Okay? Now, there's not... This is so flat, there's not much of a maximum excursion line to draw. Uh, it's even difficult to draw a median line. So let's see what we get. For me, the trade is done. Oh, you're out already? Uh, 125.92. Okay, 43 pips. You risk 25 to make 43, just so you know. And... I don't know how you would know to get out there, but okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm taking your order off since you're, you're taking your profit. All right, so you can see how it's curl down. You can see why I marked the pivot. I think this is the top. I think this is the shoulder. It may be horizontal and turning up, or it may be horizontal and turning down. Um, the only thing I have going for me in this argument is I've got a runaway bar to the top 
here that failed and I've got a lower one here that is failing. See it? See this bar and this bar and aren't they the same? This bar ran and failed. This bar ran and at the moment it looks like it's failing. Now, if I get a pullback here that I can afford, I'm smacking it. If I get stopped out, I get stopped out. I've got one one real, real problem here. I've got one hand tied behind my back, which is I've already told you that I'm going to do what most people do in mentoring, and I'm going to use a smaller stop than I should be using. I should be using a 45 to 60 pip stop. I'm going to make myself use a 25 pip stop. One, I see it over and over. It's 60 pips down from MLA to MLB. Yep. So if I use a 60 pip stop, this trade is pretty hard to swallow and set up, isn't it, Ouija? Yeah, so in a weird way, by looking through all of your eyes, so to speak, or not all of you, but people at least that have been a mentoring that are that have been trading 60 minute bars and using two small stops, and going ahead and say, you know what, I'll I'll limit myself to this. My stop would have been below 135.80. Right. So what you're telling me it's going to be 10 pips Jose what well Jose if you try and trade the euro long at 92 and a stop uh, at 80 that's so 12 pips just write me the check, okay? You need to get a dose of reality. That is not going to ever work. Not over and over and over. You're going to constantly be writing 12 and 15 pip checks. Dude, we're trading 60 minute euros, okay? And it's, I don't care about it's below two lows, okay? You're just going to get, you're going to lose, period. Also, Jose, since you're bringing it up, let me just ask you a question. Where's your target? Death by a thousand cuts, says L. Where's your target? How are you going to pick a target? Oh, man. You're going to put your sell order right here or right here? Uh, one, 136.25 or... 136.50. You bet 136.25. You're gonna get long at 92, and you're gonna trade for 35 or 25. You better start watching some videos, Jose. You will not make it trading like this. You're not listening to what I'm talking about. It's like crystal mess, says Shane, and I agree. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just telling you, you're you're missing it. You're not getting it. Okay, this is death by a thousand cuts. This is how retail traders blow up their account and end up broke. Those bars really get me. Well, dude, have you not been here when we've been talking about risk reward and a minimum of 15 pip stops and ATRs. I mean, you're not. You're not even. You're basically at the ATR. You you can't trade like that. You can't. It's not going to work. You you violated everything that we teach in the breakfast session. So, I want you to think about it. I want you to go back and watch this video and think about it because if this is what you're actually doing in your trading, it's not going well, and it's not going to go well. Okay, you're going to have to study, you're going to have to put together a framework, and you're going to have to put together a good framework, and you're going to have to overhaul your trading. It's not going to work if you do what you're talking about here. And I only call it, well, okay, I don't, I'm not saying it because I want to be right. I'm saying it because, Jose, to be honest, I want to make you profitable. 
okay and if you keep doing this you're not going to be profitable I don't care who you are you know what, what your talent level is you're not going to be able to make it okay this will not that, that type of trading will not work that's impulse trading you're getting dragged in by the bars and you're, you're just not going to be able to do it and trading for this little swing here is a waste of time okay enough so I have this bar that fails and this bar and it's starting to fail this is enough like this that if we get a pullback swing into this area I'm willing to get short if I have a stop now remember I'm gonna use a 25 pip stop which I'm gonna say right up front I'm against I think it's too tight for this market but I got lots of people using it and I'll see if I could skinny my way through which is probably a bad idea I probably shouldn't have done it but maybe I'll get stopped out All right, well, as we pull back, and this is a minor pullback, David, but this is a pullback. We come down, and now we're curling up. And I know it looks like the first. Do you often look for a signature between MLA and MLC? Well, the signature is actually before A. Right? Then when this pops it dawns on me that this looks like this and it failed and this is a lower high if it does fail and you can see it starting to fail so the question is do I have a stop and does it swing back up to something where price should run out of energy where, where, where should price run out of energy I'm not sure yet where should price run out of energy at the median line right so I'll sell the median line. What can I buy with a 25 pip stop? Hey. I can be above A more than 5 pips. Now, I don't like doing this. I shouldn't be doing this. But I'm going to force myself to do it. Because I told myself I would. Okay, we're on time-based bars. We're using 25 pip stops. A lot of you can't stomach using more than that. I don't recommend it on 60 minutes, okay? I recommend if you're going to use 20 pip stops, 25 pip stops, that you're, especially in the euro, that you're down on 20 minute or 30 minute, not on 60, but we'll go ahead with this. All right. <clears throat> this should have popped here. No. Yeah. Sorry. This should have popped here because we've got five pips. So we sell, the, and I'm giving this a test. It's plus or minus a pip. Sell the retest. It's double tops. And we're off to the races. Now notice I didn't get cheap and just put it right at the median line. I went a couple pips inside of the prior high. Do you notice that? I've got plenty of room. I could have done this and gone to the stop if to the you see what I mean I got enough room that I could have gone down to the close and more wouldn't have mattered same trade right you could be you could be very aggressive if you want to in fact I recommend I recommend that in this case because in this case you don't want this thing if this is what you're thinking, you don't want this thing to take off without you. Would you say the mirror bars, four bars prior to the entry, make you see it? poison the air for you to go inside this bar? Four bars prior to the area. One, two, three, four. here. Yeah, this looks like price failing to me. Yeah, I'd, I would say that. Would we? I'll read it again. Ouija says, would you say the mirror bars, four bars prior to the entry, right here where my pivot is? Um, would make you see poison air for you to go inside the line it's not it's not the point it's not that I'm going inside the line because of the point this just makes me see it failing Ouija and the reason I can go inside is because look what my stop buys me 
I can I could be here but I could also be all the way down to here and I'm still buying below A right um, if 25 pips is too tight, then those trading 60-minute charts would have a whole lot fewer and potentially larger trades. That is correct if you have the right risk reward. That is correct. Yes. You'll have fewer trades. Well, or the trades last longer, David. Right? They're longer trades. You have fewer trades for months because the trades last longer. Right? So if you want more than five trades a month... A lot of people have trouble at 20 minutes to find five trades a month. If you want more than five trades a month, you can't be on the 60 minute. Period. But that doesn't mean you can't make money. It just means, you know, the trades they take days to unfold. But maybe this is your sweet spot. And if it is, then work it over until you get it, you know, go through the process until you get it all worked out. And there are some really beautiful 60-minute trades. There are some real beautiful 120-minute trades and 240-minute trades. But there's lots of pretty 20-minute trades as well. So it depends on what your sweet spot is. That's one of the other hard things to find is to find the right frame for you. How much time do you have in front of your screen? Are you willing to hold? How many trades? If you don't... I need to know whether or not you're itchy if you don't get X amount of trades per month. If you need more trades, then you need a smaller time frame. All those things come into play. And if you're in the wrong time frame, you can be you can be a trading disaster until you get in the right time frame. Because it pulls apart all of your master yourself rules. So it's really very important. Alright, so we're short. You need to be in the comfort zone. That's right, Kai. We're short, starting to pull away. It's starting to fail, just like this one did. Keep your eyes on this one. The same thing's happening here. We'll see if it swings. Now we're back at the upper parallel. Is it going to swing and take us out? We are above it. Now, for those of you that get uncomfortable, Dawn, for example, hates trading outside the meeting line. Wants it, and she actually has in her trade plan... I'm in mentoring. I just couldn't take it anymore. She said, you know, it's outside. It's outside of the meeting line again. Well, okay, I'll tell you what. Then put it inside your trading plan. That, you know what, after two closes or three closes, I don't remember what she has. You know, if it's outside the meeting line, I, I'm out. Okay, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But put it in your trading plan. Make it official. And, do, and always do the same thing. So let's see how, what this leads to. Because as far as I'm concerned, I want this for entry. It looks like we're about to swing and take us out, but I'm, you know, we're still awake. We're not even at, at our entry, but it looks starting to look strong, and then it pulls back and made a new low, but came right back. Look, look at this high, right back at our entry. One more time. Shame on me. Right at our entry. And then look at the close all the way down here. Yeah, another big failure. You think there's some sellers in this area? Looking around, sniffing. All right, so we have one maximum excursion line, which is from A to C, and we extend it out, right? See it? Now we get this bar up that's a big failure. Well, hell, let's add another maximum excursion line. What can you tell me about the two? Let's just stack them. Price is accelerated to the downside, right? At least in 2D. Right? So we're measuring the steepness of this move. It's, in, it's accelerating. It may not look like it. At the moment, it, 
for people looking in 2D and looking at this, what are they seeing? They're seeing a range, right? Do you see that? But for those of us that are looking at 3D, we're seeing price accelerate. Do you see that? Lower 3D high compared to the first mix. Yeah, do you see? Do you see what we're gaining by adding the extra dimension? We have a real feel of the acceleration of this market, and clearly, it's not available to people just thinking in the 2D world. Nothing's happened yet. But now it has. Second close back inside the lower parallel. What's our, uh, what, what would you have as a target? Media, in the middle, media line, okay. Can I use a modified shift? I'll, I'll, I'll flash it up there briefly, but I'm not going to change the trade. You know what it is because of the maximum excursion line, right? Shane says, second line from B is target. So you're only going to 138, 135.85, Shane? We just says double the horizontal range, MLA to MLB is a possible target. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. Uh, projected slope line from the low for 3D target, says John. Okay. Let's just, let's just follow through, but just have a have a lots of old boxes to be broken to the downside. Well, not on this screen, right? As far as I'm concerned, let me let me explain this again. Everything reset when we said what is the quality of the top. So things that are over here to the left don't exist anymore. Because we climbed up all the way here, and now we went all the way down here, and now we've climbed back up. All the stuff that's over here to the left is gone. Those orders are gone. Okay? They've all been refreshed. That's what, well, if we take out this low, it's wide open space. But we have to, we have to take it out this low yet. Okay? All right, so let's just have a, just, just as long as you have a target in your mind, I don't care. Let me just remind anybody that's getting squeamish about profits. You're risking 25. You're, even at, you're not even at 2 to 1. At the median line right now, you are at 2 to 1. If it went straight down, okay, and get about two and a half to one if it hits the median line where price currently is because of time. Back to the median line, back above the median line. So clearly, the median line worked for the entry. But it's really not controlling the action that well anymore, is it? The volatility has picked up, yeah. At least the bars have. Although, look at the number. The number is lower because of the lagging nature. Right? Of a 200 period moving average. So... 
I'm going to rely on these maximum excursion lines and our boxes, not the median line, to control what I'm doing. No, no, Jade, I already know where the shift is. It, the shift is relative to here. Okay. I, I'm not going to die if I don't have a median line describing price right now. I'm okay. I'm, I'm really okay with that. It's okay. Here's what I have in front of me. I've got these two maximum excursion lines, and I've got this high, this high, a lower high, and a lower high, and then I've got one straight set of lines which describe the bottom. Does that make sense? So at this point, I use the median line for my entry. The median line price has kind of floated to the right. I'm realizing I can use something other than median lines to keep me in the trade. There you go, Gina. We floated to the right of the median line, but that's okay. If we accelerate through to open space, we may find ourselves, and by the way, we could also do this. Right? But we may find ourselves back within the median line and back at the median line if we hit empty air down here. Or we could find ourselves stopped out. So I can box in, I can use maximum excursion lines, I can use lots of things other than the median line. It's no big deal to me that the median line is either sloppy or it's trading to the right. Basically mirror bars, closes above and gets rejected. And so now look, and yeah, apparently eventually I did write it in. What we're, what we're trying to figure out now is what's the quality of this bottom? Is this bottom going to give away? Because right now, We'll do the measurements. Right now we have exactly twenty five to make sixty six sounds like about two and a half to one. And if not, we're in a sideways market. Now at two and a half to one and we're still trying to figure out the quality of the bottom and we've got two lower highs here and two maximum excursion lines is what do you think about break even you want to give away 60 pips So we'll go to break even. Hi Petra, how are you? Now for David and Maceo and Jose, Jose was bullish. David wants to know about pendulum pullbacks, and Maceo is working out the quality of the tops and bottoms. We're going to identify other short entries and put them in there, okay? Goodbye bottom. First problem is met at the median line. Risk reward is 2.2, so profits here do not work. I don't know why I said ML. I should say. I don't even know if that's the truth. And that should be here. Mm. There. When we get down to here, the first problem's met. And we go to break even. 
Somebody's saying box. Okay, except that if we were using 20, the most I can stomach going down to, it's the euro, is, is we're using 25, is 20. So that would look like this. Now, if you wanted the box, that's worse than break even. That's worse than break even. And I wouldn't box there, but even that's worse than break even. But we can think about boxing in the future, right? So we're at break even. Some people are thinking about the median line. Some people are thinking about double the range. Okay. <clears throat> For us to trade again, if you missed the original entry, does everybody follow me? We have explored the quality of the bottom. And it's not so much quality at this point, don't you think? Lower highs, lower lows, and we had that pattern with two violent bars up followed by two complete failures and this bottom has now been broken the top looks pretty damn good the bottom not so good but if you missed the shoulder and it's over here this was the reaction to that shoulder right here see it this is what Amos meant about top don't sell it wait for the reaction and if it's weak and this is a re weak reaction that's the shoulder now find your way in which we did does everybody understand that okay now <clears throat> since we think we know what path we're on <coughs> excuse me we're gonna have to rely on something else that we talk about here all the time which is repeatable patterns Well, you can go for something, you know, you can sell that retest, but I, first of all, there's no stop. Would the fulcrum be the outside bar for me, the high at 136.30 here? And that could be used for a stop. It could be used for a stop, but not right now. So what we need now is repeatable patterns. In other words, we need something to be tested and then retested because you know, we don't have a shoulder. We don't have a top to form a shoulder, right? Or we can say, new top, now where's the shoulder? Or we can say, here's the test, where's the retest, right? You follow all those things? But I want to see, personally, if I've missed the first sale, I'm looking for repeatable patterns. That's normally what I do, so let me show you what I do. And there's lots of them here. So we range, start to take out the low, almost get to the median line, achingly close to the median line. Look at the volatility die again, died here, then made a move, died here, curling up a little bit. <clears throat> now. I can't see the bottom here. It's not clear. So I just put in a gently sloped bottom. Follow me? It, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, apparently I grabbed the wrong one. Well, where are you? There we are. So there's my gently sloped bottom. And I've got a number of tops up here. And I've got this maximum excursion ring, this maximum excursion. Let's see what we get out of this. We got two things we're trying to do. We're trying to manage the trade we have going on. And we're trying to find repeatable patterns that allow the people that were left at the train station to get on. Okay? 
because I know a lot of you, well, all of us, find ourselves at that junction at some point. Miss the trade. It looks like it might continue. Is there a way to get in? Yes? Without just taking a flyer. There is. So, yeah, we want to find the next high. And the best way to do that is repeatable patterns. Okay? Jose, repeat it after me. Repeatable patterns. I'm serious. Well, that, that you didn't repeat it. That's myelination. Don't say I've got it. Say repeatable pattern. There you go. That will help your mind myelinate. I'm not doing it to make fun of you. I'm help, trying to help you form a neural pathway in your mind. Okay, so we come up to the upper parallel. We're having problems, but not so much anymore. So once again, we're floating in space. We've got this blue bottom. Okay, it's busted. Hmm. What are we going to do? The good news is, as time goes on, even though we haven't made it to the lower, the median line or the lower parallel, price is going lower because we're short against downsloping lines. Isn't that correct? But we got a fair amount of money on the table. I mean, you could do. You could do this if you want. I don't know. Where's your box, Al? Okay, Al says that's where I put mine. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Al. Let's see how that works out for us. Okay. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to squeeze in because we probably have forgotten what this is. And what it is is nothing. All right. Here's our first maximum excursion line. Here's our second maximum excursion line. Teacher did a bad job. Leaves a high. No follow through. Starts to break out these lows. I'm going to put in a new maximum excursion line that's even steeper. Do you see that? Did you get stopped out, Al? No. So it originates from, okay, one more time. I'll squeeze in one more time. Pay attention. C, just like this one did. Now this one comes from the next high. Here's the next swing up. See it? And now we go straight down, and then we curl and come up. And now as we pull down, you mark this as a maximum excursion line, extend it forward. One more time. There it is. Extend it forward. And now you can see what's happening to, it looks like we're going sideways, but what are the 3D lines telling us? Not lower, not down. Accelerating. Price is accelerating. <clears throat> is that art picking that high to anchor new maximum excursion line? No, it's not. It's the Ouija, it's the first pullback after that shoulder. It's not art at all. We're going to do it again and again. First pullback after the shoulder. First pullback after the shoulder. First pullback after the shoulder. 
except this time let's mark this as we already know where the top is at this point right unless this move is over is that correct how many people would agree with that then we're now going to say this we're just we're going to skip top and say is this a shoulder and we're going to call this a test and I, I don't care about the five bars I want to sell the reaction nice reaction off that move up sell at the retest okay it's now been tested here's our test right of this maximum excursion line see it if it retests it sell it and your stop buys you this high do you see it this is a secondary entry and we're going to do a third entry I don't remember. We might even do a fourth entry. All off the same method. You're short. Remember, use all of your stop. Don't try and squeeze out the last tick. So, a great technique here is to go just at the close of the prior bar. If you can afford it, and look, you can afford more than that. Can I know how much separation you consider a test on the 60 minute time frame? It still, it's, no, it's actually, it's Ouija, it's always been three to five pips. I'd like seven, but three to five pips. We've squeezed everything in on this. I'm using stops that are smaller than I want. So, and I don't really care if this has that separation, Ouija. I care that this tested came down and tested this I'm just gonna sell the next bar I don't really care about the separation on this bar I don't because it didn't run listen to me carefully because it didn't run I'm just gonna sell the retest period who's got questions about that Nobody? Okay. So here's our secondary entry. Wait for it to test the line, sell within five bars. Just letting this new entry technique settle in. Okay. So I'm trying to catch a market that's already moving. Okay? Without us. Retest only on the original shoulder. I don't understand the question, David. I'm sorry. On this moving market, okay, I'm going to mark this as a lower shoulder. And then I'm going to put out a maximum excursion line. And then I'm going to say, hey, if it tests, I'll sell the retest. Okay? N that simple. It's trading what price doesn't do as well as what it does do. Yep. Okay? That's one way to look at it. All right, so this is my curl back. And I, I see this all. I saw it here, but I didn't see. I had no stop. I see you're willing to be more aggressive here. Not, not really. Ouija, I've got repeatable things going on. Why does that make me more aggressive? So considering how far price came down, doesn't it make you a little nervous to sell at the secondary entry? An object in motion tends to stay in motion. The retest of the new LME makes me wait for more mature structure. Okay, well, let's see what, Gina, let's see what that'll buy you. You're not willing to sell it? Let's see what this is going to buy you if you don't sell this bar. Ready? Well, you had one more opportunity. 
and it's gone. Okay. These are repeatable patterns. If you see repeatable patterns, learn them and learn how to take advantage of them. Okay. Then when a market gets ahead of you, maybe you were asleep. Okay. Maybe you were at the grocery store. Instead of selling on the first on on the test, sell on the retest. Yes. I tend to jump too early. Well, then wait for the retest. It'll slow you down. A lot of people tend to jump too early. Okay. And it forces you to wait, and it also forces you to put up price in the market and wait. Yep. Okay. And you didn't sell that. It's gone. just gone well at this point right so the original one is boxed in we're now making new lows see how the 3d acceleration which is the new maximum excursion line even though nothing was going on just like before when we compare the slope of the maximum excursion lines it's telling us hey I don't care what you see in front of you don't believe your eyes price is accelerating how's that it's like a magic trick don't believe what you see with the little balls in the hand Yeah, you're way ahead of the market. When this bar prints, they have no idea what hit them, right? And object, yeah. Al says they really like your objects in motion stay in motion. True that. Well, it until they're no longer in, in motion. So until they're not, just keep going at it. So let's see what we get. So we're boxed in. We make a new low. Close near our high. Here's our box. Sliding to the right. We like e this sliding thing. Why do we like it? Come on. Well, it does build energy, but something else is going on. It's spiraling, yes. And we're building structure. Let me, let me put a new spin on it. The market has gone back to sleep. Just like it did here, the market went to sleep. But in three dimensions, keep watching. Bust it out, so. Both trades now, right? I would think. Right? Yes, no, yes. Looks like the longs got tired. They got bored. We must be dynamic looking for reactions on shoulders whilst identifying pullbacks forming shoulders. That's right. Don't don't be just stick in the mud like these people. Well, I'll just get long here. Oh well, never mind. Think about what the market's doing. What opportunities are there for you? If you're already short, it's just a boxing thing, but you know, if you're looking for it. There's a great secondary trade. Now it's looking like a pretty nice secondary trade, isn't it? You got 70, 80 pips in it. And I know we haven't made the median line and everybody wanted the median line, but you know what? We're a hell of a lot farther than if we'd gone right to the median line. Test of the maximum excursion. Gina, are you there? We are reading price, which is better. That is true, Al. Gina, are you here? Okay, Gina. This is for Maceo. 
David, Jose, and you. Test of the maximum excursion. Test of the maximum excursion, right? Test of the maximum excursion. It's repeatable. You see it close outside? I'm going to buy a bar. David, at that point, I, at this point, I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, fog things up by doing one, two, three to the top and that kind of stuff. You can if you want, but I, I don't think this, this is, this one is debt is falling off a log simple if you just don't complicate it. You know, sometimes you're, you're, you can be your worst enemy by trying to complicate yourself by doing counts or whatever. But this one is just simply, it's a line and it's working. Go with the line. All right. So I wouldn't sell against this, uh, this bar right here because it's closing outside, right? Do you see? Look at the close. It's not that I'm looking for separation. I just want it to be, you know, I want to know that the maximum extrusion line is going to work. Does that make sense? So here's my pullback. They ran to the stops to the downside. And now anybody that was a breakout seller just got stopped out. And then when this one doesn't follow through and closes inside, all right. I got two closes inside. I should have it going to go bar in here. It'll pop up in a second, I'm sure. Just sell a retest of the max excursion, and I'm going to be inside by a few pips. Does that make sense? Surprised that uh, that might be the bar I got short on, but we'll see in a second. Nope, there you go. Just be inside a few pips. You want to make sure the maximum excursion is still working, and it is. Then put your order in. What could be more simple than that? So let me do it again. I don't like it because it's closing outside. It's closing inside. Show me one more bar and I'll get excited. Okay, I get it. If I if it gets anywhere, you know, I'm not going to be this aggressive. I don't think I need to be. It doesn't look like it's taken off to the downside. If you want to be, that's fine. You can afford it. As long as you're above here, I'm just going to go a couple pips off of this top and two or three pips inside of this downsloping maximum excursion line. Get me short. Okay, I'm short. Thank you. Let's see what happens. An object in motion tends to stay in motion. I mean, now this one, you don't have a stop. And you also don't have any movement away. Now that you have movement away, course and it's not working doesn't come back but the good news is for all of the trades we can now go to a smaller stop does that make sense so we've got this is our third potential entry right right, right in front of me and now we're boxed in on all three. One still at a slight as it is a at a slight stop loss, but it's a smaller stop loss. The other two are at nice profits. Okay, and we're just boxing in profits. Would you freshen up the maximum excursion line? Why? I mean, you could. Al, you want to? I'm, you can do this if you want. Why don't? Can somebody tell me why I don't like this? Now, it might be correct. Don't get me wrong. But why wouldn't I like this? I, I, I don't see... Do you see this as a significant high, L? This doesn't look like a significant high to me, so that's why I wouldn't use it. I don't like it because price looks like it might be decelerating.
and of course then we pop a new low which means it is accelerating so it I you know I this might be the right thing to do because this is our first nice transgression of this maximum excursion line so I didn't I wouldn't I just box in at this point I would say this, Al, I'm probably no more likely, I'm probably now unlikely to sell this maximum excursion line unless I get something like a significant move away from it and then a nice test and retest with a good stop. Here, you know, kind of fluffy, but there, look, there's, there's some art in it, right? There's a filtering process that your brain has to make. What works for you? And you can see we're trying to get back above what was this low and not doing it. I want to say that I, this is live probably. We're about done, Perry. I think this is live. That's live right there. So this is live. So pardon me for squeezing in. It's not to look at market structure. It's just to measure where we are profit-wise. On the original. We risked 25. We're now at a buck 90. So once the new la low, lower maximum excursion has been tested, we can sell when price hits it again. If price is if price is working, that's the key, Gina. Yes. You got a buck 90 on that trade. On the second trade, you have a paltry. buck something buck 15 we don't have to wait for subsequent retests of the test nope so four to one on that one and even on this one you're almost at three to one so all three trades are working aren't they And the train certainly left the station after this top. And yet we managed to get in here, managed to get in here, managed to get in here. What is interesting is that price was not accelerating from the maximum excursion line as it was previously. My conclusion, price may be forming a base. Okay, it might be, Al. I'm a little ooky about this one, about price action here. I don't disagree, but... Every time that we've gone dead flat, what's happened? So until that pattern, again, an object in motion tends to stay in motion, okay? Patterns that are working tend to continue to work until they don't. This one looks a little suspect to me. I agree. However, it's been treating me right all along, hasn't it? This is a question for everybody. This pattern and this downtrend has been treating me right all the way down. So why would I fight it? Why would I try and pick a bottom? Why would I say, okay, it's obviously forming a base? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. If it is, I'm going to get profit stopped out. That's okay. Yeah, ego. That's it, right, Gina. You know what? You don't have to think about that it price will take care of that let me just show you what takes care of that you see this little blue profit stop right there does everybody see that if price is forming a base that little blue profit stop will take care of the issue I don't have to think about it I don't have to judge it I don't have to get worried I'm already covered get it it's built in I don't want to say it's system it's a system it's systematic Okay, so I don't have to think about it. Now, my 
my, I'm going to use Gino's, Gina's word, my ego is, when I saw this, is telling me, well, maybe this line isn't working anymore, and maybe we're forming a base. The only thing about forming a base is then we blew out the bottoms. But, I don't know, it's starting to look sloppier. So I'm less comfortable than I was earlier on, but that's okay. This is, ta is, is you mean is a tactical thinking to think that it's forming a base, Al? Okay, that's fine. And, okay, as a battle commander, do I have that covered? Let me give you the tactical thinking and the strategy. Do I have it covered? Right here. Right? There's a difference between observing a change in behavior versus picking a bottom. Yeah, I, I could be nervous about this, but it's just made new lows. So in case the new lows are the last photon, right? That may be the case. I've covered myself with my profit stop, right? And in fact, <clears throat> if you're worried about this trade, it's almost, this trade right here is almost at 3 to 1. You can go to break even on this one right now. In fact, let's do that. Let's just go. Do, 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 do. When you get down here, Okay. There is no other logic other than the existing. Cover at the moment for a profit target. Yeah. Look, if you're nervous. You've got 190 pips in the first trade. Take your 190 pips and stop. 133.97 is looking like a huge problem area. Why? Jose, what the hell does 133.97 got to do with anything? Why? Jose, did, were you not here 45 minutes ago when we talked about staying to the right? I, I know you, you're going to go home thinking that I'm being tough on you. You're not listening to me. Do I have to squeeze in for you? Do you, do you want to know where the euro was in, 19, in well, not in 1999, it didn't exist, but in 2001? If I was in this trade short, it would bother me. Yes, that's because you're not trading correctly, Jose. If you were trading correctly and you were short, you wouldn't know about 133.97 and you wouldn't care. Your profit stop would be right here. You just made new lows. If the pattern repeats itself, you'll be boxing in further profit. If it doesn't, okay, the worst that happens to you is you don't take 190, you take, uh, let's see. Oh, I'm sorry, you only take in 140. Jose, you're only going to get to the point where you have 140 pips in a euro trade on a regular basis if you learn to trade to the right. Learn to stay in the moment, quit squeezing in, and quit worrying about what happened six days ago. 
those orders got moved a long time ago. Period. Are you still worried about the sell orders at 136.90? Why? Why not? It's the same logic. Do you think those sell orders are still there? They moved on with the price action. Jose, when price made this new low and came here and failed, they moved to here or here. That's why we're making new lows. They move on with price action. They're not static. Okay, I'm not going to put my sell order at something that happened on June 20th. I'm not. Even if I'm a hedger, it's the end of July. I'd be fired. I can't be hedging based on what happened in the middle of June. I'd be fired. I get judged month to month. You're going to have to let this go, Jose, or you're not going to make it. You've got to learn what's the current controlling swing. What's the current repeating pattern? I'm fine with the thought of that maybe this is bottoming out because I'm I'm not sure I like I'm not sure that this looks like the prior tests but I'm covered by this blue stop this blue stop Maceo lets me say F you to 133.97 I don't care because I'm protected here and now if price blows through 133.97 and everybody that was leaning on it like you It'll be 132.50 before whatever. Some friends use Online Trading Academy and they feel that levels that are set days, weeks, months, and even years ago still hold with residual institutional orders still there. Just an FYI. Well, here's what I say about Online Trading Academy. Online Trading Academy has called me. They've called Shane. They didn't know that we were teachers and traders. And they told us even if we worked as taxi men, taxi, taxi drivers, after a two-week course, we could teach others how to trade, Bob, just so you know. Now, is that a place where you want to spend your money? Yeah. They just go through the phone book. I'm, you know, what do your friends say? I'm, I'm just curious. Well, I, I, I know you don't use them. And they're not that cheap, by the way. One is profitable. Well, okay, maybe he can just trade. I'm not going to waste any time dissecting anybody else's approach to the market, but I can tell you this. It's actually... That's why you hear it here first and everyone copies us. That's right, BJ. It's actually, a, they really want your money to learn. Then I don't know how they support and teach. They don't support and teach. They don't, they, they can't trade. They're not traders. It's actually a company. We were called when they first started the company, Bob. It's actually uh, three gentlemen from Africa that moved, and it's not a slam on people from Africa, people, three people from Africa that moved to America that realized that, you know what, people in America love to trade we got to get us some of them. And th then they realized they couldn't trade. So they formed a company. Yeah, I'm not even going to mention names, Bob. Can't do it. Won't do it. And he's not worth the letters in his name. So, anyway, enough. I'm not, I'm not going to give anybody any. I should have said their, my apologies for saying their name. 
they're just not worth they're not worth your time they're not worth your effort if you, I assume you're doing you're learning here aren't you Bob That's all I care. Bob says I'm learning a lot here. That's all I care about. I don't care about, about what anybody else is doing anywhere else. I really don't. I think what I will take from today's session is learning to move on and be in tune with the moment. I hope so, Jose. I want you to watch this video, okay, and realize. Let me just say this again, and I want you to think about this. If I can get to the point where I can put in this blue profit stop, do you see this right here, Jose? then I've bought not caring about 133.97. I no longer have to think about it. I'm protected. And if 133.97 gets taken out and all kinds of people are leaning against it, their stop losses are going to get hit. That's going to put, push me to further profits, right? But I no longer have to think about it because by keeping my eye on the right, I was able to get short and move my stop box and my stops all the way down. Now I'm boxed in at 135. Okay? I don't have to think about it. I didn't even... Jose, you ready? This is the truth. I have an intraday position on, which is a 60 minute, and I've got a huge daily position on in the Euro. I got up today. I cleaned up the chart. I never once looked at where price was. I don't have the faintest idea. I don't care. I'd be stopped out if I, you know, what's the point? Why look? There's nothing for me to do. I wanted to show a couple alternate entries. I did that. I was cleaning up the lines to make sure that none of them popped out where they weren't supposed to. And uh, I wanted to make sure that I put in um, some comments like this. That was it. That's, that's the prep I did this morning for class. I didn't, even, I didn't even check to see where the euro was. So that's what this type of boxing in buys me. I don't even have to worry about where price is. I don't have to worry about 133.97, and I don't have to worry about the current price because if I get stopped out, I get stopped out. If it makes a new high and then takes out the low, then I have to worry about moving my stop profit, and that's all I have to worry about in life. Okay, that's managing a market. So that's let, let's call it, guys. Um, if I, I'm cranky, I'm a little bit on edge today. It has nothing to do with you guys. Hopefully, you guys learned some stuff today. In what I hope was, I mean, there's some there's some pretty cool stuff, like when the market is here. For those of you that are not questioning things, when the market is static, going flat, but you're making. Well, let's do it up here. The market's flat, but you're making. Uh, steeper and steeper maximum excursion lines you know in advance that the market is accelerating even though you're in a range the market's actually accelerating tough love says Sharon it's the best thank you we all suffer from this okay think about this guys I like that have a great week I will see you on Friday and I'll see you in the market maps stuff okay take care I'm gonna do my best to take care of my I'm gonna go do some breathing stuff right now as a matter of fact so my is setting in. Good. I feel my trading style is changing. Good. You guys have a great Monday. Let's get the week started right. Well begun, half done. All right. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Take care.